Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we're going to be talking about some of my favorite types of heroes, which is a reclusive hero. Please excuse any dog ears, tails, barking you hear. Um, the dog is sitting in my lap because he's a child. He's a baby and whines and whines if he's not sitting in my lap. So he was whining outside the door, so he's going to be sitting in my lap. Right? It's all right. It's all right. Good boy. Okay, let's talk about some reclusive heroes. I love a good reclusive hero. I don't know why I love them so much, but I just do. They're such great. I think all of them are like just great characters and they have their reasons for being reclusive and they're kind of like damaged and a little bit broody and sometimes grumpy and uh, I love them. I have a few different subgenres of romance. We have contemporaries, there's an alien one, we have a few historicals, I believe. There's a novella. And there's also even a monster romance, which I'm excited to talk about. So let's get into these romances. First, I wanna talk about these two by Mia Sheridan. Everyone knows about Archer's voice, but not a lot of people have read most of all you. So let's talk about these two because I feel like Mia Sheridan writes a lot of reclusive heroes. If you don't know what a reclusive hero, by the way, is it's like, a man who's kind of like a shut-in, I think. <laughs> That's how I would describe it. Like, he's not really one to go out and socialize. He's way more of a homebody and has his reasons for not being out in the world, if that makes sense. So everyone, or almost everyone and their mother knows about Archer from Archer's Voice. Our heroine in here, Brie, goes to this very small town in Maine, moves there, and there she bumps into the town recluse named Archer. And people in the town warn her to stay away from him. He's mean, he doesn't talk to anybody, blah, blah, blah. But she makes it her mission to like get to know this man who she realizes has like no friends and lives alone. She really says that Archer is deaf and her dad was deaf and so she knows sign language. So Archer is finally able to communicate with somebody for the first time almost in his life. If you have not read this romance yet, you totally need to. This romance is epic. I feel like it's gonna be like a classic when it comes to later years when we're talking about romance books. This one is so memorable. Everyone loves Archer and loves Brie and their romance is so good. Archer is definitely reclusive at the beginning of this book and Brie kind of helps him get out of his shell and helps him explore the world more. He was just so jaded over how the people in this town treated him because of his deafness and his inability to hear. None of them took the time to get to know him or to even learn a little bit of sign language to talk to him and communicate with him. And he doesn't know how to talk to anybody any other way. Archer is definitely one of my favorite reclusive heroes ever. He is amazing. Then in here you have Gabriel. He is a man who has dealt with a lot of trauma in his life and that is his reason for being reclusive. Um, this is a romance with Crystal. Crystal is a specific type of dancer at a club, you know. Gabriel is the survivor of a childhood kidnapping and SA. Um, he was kidnapped by this man who SA'd him Oh, when he, oh, oh, he's done. <laughs> Gabriel's experienced quite a lot of trauma, as I said before. Um, he was kidnapped as a child and um, was taken by a man in a basement, lived in a basement for many years and was essayed constantly as a kid. And he finally escaped, it's years later, and he is trying to live his life now. But he still has some trauma and residual PTSD from his experience, obviously. That's very traumatic. And he really wants, like one of his dreams in life is to find a wife, to have a happy family and he feels like his experiences have tainted the future he could have with a woman and so he really wants to be comfortable with someone touching him again even if it's just like touching their hands or touching his face like he just wants to be able to be in close proximity with someone without freaking out um and so he goes to crystal who works in this club and is like hey I'll pay you this much money to just spend time with me to like help me get more acclimated with women or just being in close proximity with someone in general. And at first she says no, Crystal's dealing with a lot of things personally as well. But then one day she is in need of some money. And so she says yes. And so the two of them go on with this deal that they created and made with each other. Gabriel is reclusive, definitely at the beginning and spends a lot of time at home, does not venture out because of the trauma he's experienced. Um, he doesn't really trust people a lot because of what happened to him. But at the same time, he's also very optimistic about the world, despite what he's been through. So I just really admire Gabriel. And they help each other heal in this book. And oh, it's beautiful. Please check out these two by Mia Sheridan if you have not yet. A recent read of mine that I absolutely loved is Rush by Emma Scott. Charlotte is a Juilliard graduate. She plays the violin. 
Um, but when she graduates, she really wants to stay in New York, but New York City rent is not cheap. And so she's really struggling to make money, but also do the things she's passionate about, which is music, like perform. Then one day she ends up getting this job opportunity. She's going to be a caretaker for this man who lives in an apartment in New York City. His name is Noah and he is very grumpy, can be mean at times, and he is definitely a recluse. He does not leave his apartment. No one comes to his apartment, only like food delivery people do. Like they just leave food at his doorstep. And so Charlotte is gonna be paid to be his caretaker to take care of him in his home because he is blind. He used to be like an extreme sport, is it player, sports person? So he would do like extreme sports, like cliff diving, like dangerous snowboarding things. And a few months ago, I wanna say maybe a year ago, he got in an accident that left him with the inability to see. He could not see anymore and he, is devastated. He thinks that he cannot do the things that he loves anymore because of his disability. And so he's kind of given up on his life. He just wants to be a grump and sit in a cold, dark room for the rest of his days. And so Charlotte comes into the picture. She's been hired by his family to come take care of him. And um, the rest goes from there. They both have very strong personalities and she's the first person to be like, no, you're not gonna do this. We're gonna open the curtains. We're gonna clean up this space. Like she's the first one to kind of like whip him into shape. And he is so, so interested in her. He's very grumpy. Don't get me wrong. He's very grumpy, but he's also has a very huge soft spot for her. And there's even times where he tells her to like, oh, be quiet in the apartment. I don't wanna hear a peep from you, blah, blah, blah. This is my space. But then at night when Charlotte practices her violin, he just sits on the stairs and listens for hours to her playing music. Like, oh. I love this couple so much. If you have not read this one yet, please do. Next, I have Fractured Sky by Katherine Cowles. This is her last book in the Tattered and Torn series. I do recommend reading these books in order. This is the last book, but you've met Shiloh, who is the heroine of this book, all the way in book one, when she was a child, she was kidnapped and kept in a barn for multiple days. And she's still facing that trauma that she's experienced from being kidnapped. And so this is the fifth book in the series and you've read about her throughout the entire series um she loves to kind of like be alone it's kind of like two reclusive characters i want to say shiloh is reclusive in the fact that she just loves her alone time and loves to be going solo with her horse like she just loves her quality time by herself um because she has experienced some horrible things but the reclusive hero in this book is ramsey You've met him in book four in the series, so that's why I recommend reading these books in order. Ramsey and Hira dealt with a lot of bad things as a kid. His stepfather ended up killing his mother and pinning the murder on him. And so he was in jail for quite a long time for a murder for a crime he did not commit. And then he was finally released. When they finally realized who actually did it, he was released and he has kind of sworn off of people. He's like, I don't like people. People just betray you, people ruin you. I just want to live alone on my ranch with horses. And so he trains horses, he re rehabilitates them and helps horses who have been injured or wronged in some way. Shiloh loves horses as well. And so the only person that's allowed on his property is Shiloh. And all she does is sit on his property and watch him with these horses. She does not talk to him, doesn't interact with them. She's been doing this for years, just sitting on his property, watching him with his horses. Until one day at the beginning of this book, she finally goes up and talks to him and the rest goes from there. She kind of reveals that she's not having the best home life. Like her parents are kind of a little bit too much, specifically her mother. He's like, well, I have a empty cabin on my property. How about you just stay there? And so she moves into the cabin and they spend more time together because then she starts working with him with these horses. Ramsey does not like people. He does not like socializing. He thinks that he's not a people person at all, but Shiloh kind of helps him realize like he is a people person just with the right people, with the kind people, with the passionate people, with the people that care about you. And oh my gosh, I love them so much. This is one of my favorites in the series. Shiloh and Ramsey are epic. Next I have Neon Gods by Katie Robert. This is a Hades and Persephone retelling. Um, that's all I want to say. I can't really describe it any other way, but Hades is definitely reclusive in any Hades and Persephone retelling or most of them I want to say because he's in the underworld, you know, for eternity. That's what happens in here. The Hades in this book does not leave the underworld. Whether or not he's stuck there or chooses to be there, Hades is in the underworld. He's very reclusive, doesn't go out much. No one knows like anything about Hades in this world. Hades and Persephone in this book specifically have a deal that they put on. There's like a marriage of convenience, not like a dating of convenience. I don't know how to say it. Like fake dating, fake getting together. I don't know how to describe it. Um, this book is a little bit hard for me to, <laughs> to give a summary of, but this is just a Hades and Persephone retelling that I really enjoyed. If you want a short, quick novella, I have Cold Wood by Cassie Mint. This is a Red Riding Hood retelling. Our heroine in here is on her way to her grandmother's house 
and she gets attacked by some wolves and she's like stuck in a tree and these wolves are like barking at her trying to climb up the tree to get her and this big burly scarred man just comes barreling in and makes all the wolves go away and he rescues this woman and from that moment on the heroine just like can't stop thinking about him and she comes back to the tree to the woods like almost every day to bump into him and to lure him to her and he is very reclusive no one knows about him really he's kind of like a legend in the woods like this scarred big man and he takes her to his cabin after much persistence and they get together. This one is just a short, quick, fun read if you're wanting a winter novella to read during the winter season. Then I have How to Entice an Enchantress by Karen Hawkins. This is another situation where a hero is damaged and heavily scarred and does not want to leave the house because of that. Lord Kirken here is a widower. Him and his wife were in this boat on this ship and there was an explosion on it and his wife ended up dying and it left Lord Kirk with a few disabilities and some scars. He walks with a cane, he has a limp. He has definitely felt the brunt force of that. He is more grumpy now he's a little more jaded and he isn't the nicest person in the world then one day he ends up bumping into his next door neighbor dahlia lives on the estate next to his with her father and when they bump into each other like i think he's holding books and they start a conversation up about books and he is so into that he's like oh my gosh this woman is into what i like i feel like she'd be a great companion in life let me marry her let's do it but in this book you have the classic scene kind of like in pride prejudice when darcy proposes for the first time of like you're proposing to this woman you like, but you're also insulting her at the same time. So she says no. <laughs> so he goes to this duchess who's very prevalent in the series and is like, hey, I need your help to woo this woman. I really like her. I don't love her. I don't think I could love her. I already loved a woman, but she could be a great wife and a great companion. We both love books though. Um, and so this duchess does a lot of scheming to try and get uh, Dahlia and Kirk together. But Kirk has not been like seen in society at all. Like he is just alone in his house. Like no one, like has heard from him or seen him in years because of his accident and also kind of like fashion has changed in the midst of him being in this accident so the duchess has to like give him a makeover of what like men in the ton look and act like and speak like right now um and it's so funny i just love these two so much dahlia and kirk are amazing because kirk goes to like full length to try and get this woman to be his and then he falls in love with her in the process. Next I have Ensnared by Tiffany Roberts. This is an alien romance and this is their spidery romance. This is a spider creature, his name, his name is Katon and he lives in the jungle in his world. Their species are very much people who live like in towns with each other and Katon is very different from everyone else because he's reclusive. He lives alone in his little nest in the jungle, doesn't want to be around anybody really, um, but then he comes across this spaceship and ends up waking this creature he finds there and takes it back to his nest. It just so happens to be Ivy. He thinks that she's a pet at first, but realizes, no, she's a person. She's a sentient being and he falls in love with her. They fall in love with each other. Ivy is a human woman who uh, who was put in cryo sleep and put on this spaceship with a bunch of other people. And she's a little bit scared at first because <laughs> she's an alien creature with her, um, but there's a language barrier. They get to know each other through learning each other's language. And it is so, so, so good. I love this one. A monster romance that I just loved is No Getting Over You by Emma Eliza. This one is just so ridiculous, but so fun at the same time. Jacqueline in here is our human woman. She's hiking the Appalachian Trail and she ends up falling into like this cavern on accident and an ogre who lives in the cavern ends up saving her and kind of like claiming her as his and they have some fun together and fall in love oh my gosh it's really cute <laughs> his name is Krug and he is a recluse because like he was like outcasted by his ogre people and so he lives alone and he sees this human woman and he's like finally a companion in life I just want someone to love me and to spend time with me like I'm all alone and oh he is so, so cute. And the last one that I want to mention is Shift Just Got Real by Ruby Dixon. This is one of the books in her Bear Shifter series. I only really recommend reading this book in the series. All the other ones are like three stars. This one was a solid four for me. This is the romance between Mal and Ryan. So Mal is this bear shifter man and he's at the grocery store one day in his very small town and he ends up scenting his mate for the first time. And he's like, oh my gosh, where is she? And he's looking down all the aisles and he realizes that it is Ryan who is under age and he is mortified he's like no 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 no, that's not happening she's a ch no not happening and so he runs away to the mountains lives in the mountains for many years to forget about her 
He's like, that is not okay. That is not happening. No. And so he hides in the mountains. He becomes a recluse. No one knows about him, like where he lives. Like he's kind of like a legend a little bit because of how reclusive he is. And he only comes into town every so often to get supplies and food and all that jazz. Um, it's years later, Ryan is 21 now and she has been watching Mal every time he comes into town. And she has developed a crush on him and she kind of finds a way to lure him to her one night and the rest goes from there. They then reveal their feelings. I know I talk about this book a lot in romance rec videos, but I just love it. It's so fun and I feel like more people need to pick it up. Anyways, there you have it. Those are some reclusive heroes. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to, and please leave me any recommendations in the comment section down below. I love, love reclusive heroes, so I need more recommendations. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a bear emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.